In today's video, we'll take a look at the S&P and Dow futures markets, reviewing all of the different futures volatility box setups that we had. These are day trading setups, and I'll take you through the morning process, reviewing our morning volatility note, and how to use that to predict volatility as the day progresses. The idea is do your homework in that first 30 minutes after the market opens, understand what the volatility looks like, see where the differences are, which you'll find today there were differences in the S&P and the Dow compared to the NASDAQ and the Russell, and then use those differences to make an intelligent game plan for the rest of the day. Now starting off, here's our morning volatility note. Here's an example of today's note, and we send this note via email to all of our futures volatility box members Monday through Friday about an hour after the market opens, so 7.25 a.m. Pacific. Now the note contains the volatility landscape for 10 major futures markets, and you can see all 10 of the markets here. We have the index markets, we have the 30-year bond, we have crude, natural gas, and copper, and then finally gold and silver. You'll notice verbiage next to each one of these uh, markets, and that contains the volatility model that that particular market is on. The best way to see this ranking, I think, is visualized. So here's a line graph with the models in order. The idea here is if a market you see is on the scalper volatility box model, that means very little volatility so far to start off the day, we can continue to look for scalp trade opportunities. Now, as we go further down this line, so say you're on the doomsday conservative models, that means there's a lot of volatility in that particular market. We're being extra cautious. You'll notice our volatility models also account for larger stops, along with larger targets to still make that worthwhile. But there's definitely more risk involved here. On the other hand, if you're, say, towards the scalper side, there's less risk involved. And if you're, say, between the scalper and the aggressive, then that gives you an idea of which markets have a little bit more volatility compared to others. So now let's zoom in to our index futures markets. And there we can see the S&P and the Dow were on their aggressive volatility box models. Meanwhile, the Nasdaq and the Russell on the scalper, and I even mentioned that I expected this volatility to catch up to the S&P and the Dow as the day progressed. It's not really uh, typical to see the markets uh, separated like this for an extended period of time. Now let's review all four of these markets in a little bit more detail. We'll spend more time on the S&P and the Dow. This is where we actually had setups with our fade setup. And we can also see we had more volatility here. And I'll also show you the NASDAQ and the Russell so you can see what each of those markets look like. Now let's start with our S&P 500 market here. And I'll load in the scalper volatility box models first so you can see why we were on the aggressive and not the scalper. Now with the scalper volatility box, we conducted our morning volatility test. And there we see we in fact did have a volatility breach. We're looking to see what happens here. Do we see the buyers come in and pick price action the way we would expect them to so they're defending these levels? Or do we instead see sellers come in and bring price action down lower, breaking outside of the clouds? The distance here in the S&P that we needed to see the buyers move was about four points, four points to the downside, four points to the upside here. And we can see in the case of the S&P, price action does not give us that four points, but instead sellers have full control and we come all the way down. So as we break outside of the volatility box clouds here, that's our sign that, hey, we're not really seeing buyers defend the scalper models. We need to adapt and instead be using the aggressive volatility box models. Now, once I load in the aggressive volatility box, you take a look. This is doing a much better job of containing price action and volatility so far. Now, the trade setup in the S&P came later on in the day in the 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific hour. This is our fade setup, and I'll leave a link to a video which walks through all of the rules of that setup in more detail. If I zoom in, let's take a look at this setup now. First step of our setup, our fade setup, is we need to see our volatility models being breached. That's this blue cyan line. Now here we had the breach as price action fell inside of our volatility box models. So this red candle is step one of that fade setup where we now have our volatility models breached. Step two, we need to see an overbought oversold confirmation. That's this green arrow right here. This is the edge signals indicator. For all volatility box members, this is included for free with your membership. Now, once we have the edge signals indicator confirmation, we know that we're extended on our volatility models, 
And we know that we expect now to see buyers to come in and bring price action up higher. Our entry that we're looking for is any price better than the sign line. So really this entire zone right here. In terms of our stop, that's outside of the clouds. So in today's case, that was below the 4134.50 level. The risk that we give that particular trade, which in today's case was 4.75 points, is what we're targeting on the opposite side for our first target. Now we hit that first target in this move up. As soon as that happens, T1 gets hit. We move all remaining contracts to break even. So now our stop is here at break even. And our second target is the gray target line on the opposite side, which in today's case was a little bit above that 4150 mark. To be exact, 4150.25 to be on the underside of it. And if you wanted to be safe, you might have even gone 4149. Now, if I zoom out and we take a look to see what ends up happening, price action hits T1. Now, the stop never comes back down to break even, and in the close is where we finally ended up making a move up to the second target line, really at the very end candle here that we had before the bell rang. So inside of the S&P here, this was the setup that we were looking for, this was the setup that triggered, and the one that met all of our rules. For those of you that are zero days to expiration option traders, the SPY option equivalent at this time, the at the money was the 412 calls. At the time of entry, the contracts were going for about 44, 45 cents. And when we hit T1, the contracts were going for something closer to the 68 cent mark, which was a pretty nice 54% return, which I think sounds real great. But I am more curious to see what would have happened with the zero days to expiration contracts had we completely reversed here. Well, they have instead lost much more than that 54% uh, percent of their contract value had we reversed this late in the day. So that was an interesting one for those of you that are zero days to expiration traders. Maybe that's a data point that you can use. Now we move on next to the Dow futures, and now we can go through the rest of the markets a little bit faster. Coming back to the scalper models, the Dow had the same idea here. We didn't see the buyers defend this level. Instead, sellers had control. And that's where we had to switch to the aggressive volatility box models. On the aggressive volatility box, we had the same exact setup. This time you had an entry much greater or much better rather than the sign entry line with price coming all the way back down to the clouds. So instead of using just the sign entry line, you had this entire zone to work with for slightly better entries. And if you get an entry at the clouds, that really allows you to cut your risk in half and skew the risk to reward in your favor. Now coming back to this setup here, using the cyan entry line, the stop on this particular trade was 40 points for our first target. We hit that 40 points in this move up right here. And inside of the Dow, you can see price action comes back and takes off the remaining contracts at break even here. So the Dow didn't have the same sort of uh, withstanding for the second batch of contracts that the ES futures did. And I thought that was also an interesting point worth highlighting given that the Dow, similarly to the S&P, also hit what would have been T2 and that final uh, bell before the markets closed. Now, the next two markets I can show you are the Scalper and the Russell. There we were on the Scalper volatility box model, excuse me, the NASDAQ and the Russell on the Scalper volatility box models. And there inside of the NASDAQ, we had price action breach our sign entry lines in that 8 to 9 a.m. Pacific hour. But here we hit T1 before even getting an opportunity to enter. And after that, we had a retest. Retests are not valid per our trade plan. But we did see price action break above the clouds, which gave us our clue that, hey, volatility is now caught up. And we're on the aggressive volatility box models. Same setup came inside of the NASDAQ here in that 10 to 11 a.m. hour. But you can see the NASDAQ had taken off no entry at the sign line after seeing the edge signal confirmation. Finally, the last market, for those of you curious, is the Russell futures. Now, coming off inside of the Russell, we'll start with the scalper models. And all the way up through the morning here, the Russell did not have that same kind of volatility we saw in the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow. It was in the 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific hour, the lunchtime hour here, where we saw volatility kick inside of the Russell. And there, buyers just came straight in, picking price action up outside of our clouds. We broke outside before seeing any kind of sell confirmation. So now we're adapting to volatility. We went to the aggressive models, and price action here breaches the aggressive models, and even goes outside of the aggressive models before seeing our bearish edge signal confirmation. So we adapt one more time. Now we see 
really strong buyers, no scalper, no aggressive. We have to be on the doomsday aggressive models. Coming inside of the doomsday aggressive, this is the model that finally contained that little glip right here of price action. And then in that pullback in the next hour, we didn't fall as deep as we wanted compared to the S&P and the Dow. So one more time to recap, this was the morning volatility that we started off with. If we take a look at what happened as the day progressed, we had seen here the S&P and the Dow lead the way with the aggressive and the Nasdaq and the Russell were on the scalper. By the end of the day here, the S&P and the Dow remained on their aggressive. The Nasdaq joined the aggressive. The Russell here joined all the way down to the doomsday aggressive. So you can see how that volatility early on in the morning ended up shifting as the day progressed. And the clues that we had given two of the four index markets that we can look at gave us early signs of at least any ways of predicting a volatility increase as the day progressed without planned volatility catalyst. Well, this was your way to doing just that. I hope for all futures volatility box members, you found today's video useful. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and I'll see you in our next update.